In many programming examples, you'll often see three dots to signal that some code goes there, but it's not relevant and therefore omitted for brevity. But did you know that in Python, this code with the three dots is actually valid syntax? In this video, you'll learn why that's possible, why it was added, and what use cases there are. Hi, and welcome to Premature Abstraction. This video is about the ellipsis object in Python. Let's clear up the confusion from the intro first. In Python, you already have syntactically valid code as soon as you put any expression in the function or class body. So you could, for example, also simply put in a number or a doc string, which in Python is just a plain string literal. And the three dots are also just an object called ellipsis. Now let's get a bit more context. The three dots are more or less just a shorthand literal for the ellipsis object. The ellipsis object in turn is the singleton instance of the ellipsis type. So when the Python interpreter starts up, it creates this singleton instance. This type was not exposed by the types module in Python, but since Python 3.10, there is an alias called ellipsis type. And every time the constructor is called, the same singleton instance is returned. We can check this by using the ID function. So to summarize, the three dots, ellipsis and calling the types, all give a reference to the same object. The only difference between the three dots and ellipsis is that the three dots are a literal and therefore cannot be reassigned. Ellipsis can be reassigned, but of course that doesn't mean that you should, but the three dots will always give you the singleton ellipsis object, no matter the circumstance. Now, where does this object come from? In Python 2, the ellipsis was only allowed in slicing, basically as syntactic sugar for libraries like NumPy to provide more ergonomics there. However, we can read in the old mailing lists that there were more cases where it could be helpful. So starting with Python 3, it was made a generally valid expression. Two use cases for the ellipsis syntax have already been mentioned. First, it is used in numerical libraries such as NumPy and PyTorch. When slicing a multi-dimensional array, you can put in the three dots to select all remaining dimensions. For example, here we take the first index in the first dimension, the third index in the last dimension, and all indices in the dimensions in between. And in this example, we take the first index in the last dimension, but all indices in the other dimensions. Next, it is used as a visually nice placeholder where the implementation is missing. So similar to how parse is used, but note that parse is a statement and therefore cannot be handed around like a value, but ellipsis can. The general consensus is to use parse to signify that the implementation is supposed to be empty, like an empty except block, and ellipsis when the implementation is missing. By the way, ellipsis is also used heavily in stub files for the same reason. If that is supposed to lead to runtime errors, you should also think about whether you want to raise a not implemented error instead. In libraries like FastAPI, Typer, or Pydantic, it is used to signify that a value is required without setting a default value. This is necessary here because Python on its own would not be able to differentiate the two cases, as technically a default value is given. Ellipsis also plays a big role for type annotations. Let's say you want to return a list of integers. No problem, you just say list int, and if you want to return a tuple instead, just say tuple. However, as tuples are immutable, you need to specify how many values are in the tuple. So you would need to write this, but sometimes you don't even know how big the tuple will be. In those cases, you can annotate the type with the ellipsis. The same goes for callables. Let's say you want to annotate a function that takes in any arguments, but always spits out an integer. You can do it like this. The next use case is for clean API design in a library. Generally, in Python, mutable default values should be avoided as they keep the state over multiple function calls. A common tip is to always use none as a value to signal that this value has not been set by the caller. But what if none is now also a valid argument to your function? Then you need a different sentinel value, and here you can use ellipsis. This is, for example, a common problem when designing SDKs for web APIs where it makes a difference in the JSON body whether a parameter is included but set to null or not included at all. Here, it is important though to communicate this clearly to your colleagues or collaborators because it may not be obvious that this value is used for that purpose. Other solutions are to define a new sentinel value yourself, which you can then use for this purpose to be more explicit. And now some random trivia about ellipsis. 
ellipses evaluates to true. This may be surprising for some and completely reasonable to others, but it's good to know nonetheless. As everything is an object in Python, this singleton pattern for special values is quite common. For example, it's the same for none or true and false, but still not exactly the same, as you, for example, cannot reassign none. When you append a list to itself, it will display the ellipsis literal. However, this is just a visual representation of the recursive reference that Python created. It actually has nothing to do with the ellipsis we talked about in this video. Ellipsis is a regular object and ellipsis type a regular type. Still, you cannot attach other fields to the ellipsis object as it is frozen and you cannot inherit from ellipsis type because it is sealed. And that's it. This has been Premature Abstraction. Thank you for watching.